So uh, Bitcoin is a currency. It's a network. It's a platform for building applications and currencies and other uh, economic functions uh, using algorithms. The prime function of the Bitcoin platform is to enable consensus without a central control. The uh, most perfect money for the internet that we've ever had, but that's just the beginning. Really, Bitcoin is the new internet of money. If you're just an individual using Bitcoin to buy and sell things, great. It's just like anything else. You you're gonna pay, uh, you know, you're gonna pay your transaction, and that's it. If you're someone who makes a living in Bitcoin, you pay income tax. And if you're someone who's mining on Bitcoin, you pay income tax on those Bitcoins. So if you're an investor, you pay capital gains. It's treated just like any other currency. It's a network effect. They create this attractive force where it gets more useful the more people who use it. Network effect was coined first by Bob Madcalf in 1984. He said the value of the network increases exponentially with the addition of each node. Because when you join a network, you don't just gain that value. But by increasing the size of the network, you make it more valuable for everyone else because they have one more person to connect to, right? And if you keep doing that, it achieves a scale where it starts multiplying. That's how the internet grew. Okay, so if we take the internet, the internet is a tool that was put out there and empowered a lot of people. But at the same time, while it exists, there's a whole body of people who are building tools to track people on the internet, to censor information on the internet, and just to generally oppress people. At the same time, there's another group of people on the internet who are building tools to allow people to get around the tracking, to anonymize their identity, to get around censorship, and just to generally free people. Bitcoin is also like the internet, a tool put out there to free people, to empower a lot of people. And at the same time, there will be people who are researching into Bitcoin how to track financial transactions, how to censor financial transactions, and how to oppress people. And there is also a group of people who are researching how to get around the uh, tracking to anonymize financial transactions, to get around censorship of financial transactions, and just to generally free people. And it, it's always a constant struggle between these two groups of people throughout society. And the really cool thing with these internet technologies is they tip the balance more in favor of this side of people who is working to free people. And that is what I love about Bitcoin. It's the first step is there, but it's not the end. We have to keep fighting, we have to keep pushing, and we have to keep building more and more better tools for the people. With Bitcoin, there is no Bitcoin company, there is no uh, Bitcoin building, there's even, not even a Bitcoin server anywhere that you could shut down. It is completely distributed. Um, that's what's unique about Bitcoin. It is, for the first time, a way for the two of us to exchange value online without a third-party intermediary. Until the invention of Bitcoin, for you and me to exchange money online, we had to employ a third party. On the other hand, you have credit card transactions, other electronic payments, where you know, your name is known to the credit card company, my name is known to the credit card company, and the credit card company keeps a record of the date and time and amount of the transaction, sometimes even the purpose of the transaction, totally identified. Bitcoin is somewhere in the middle, where there is a record kept of the time and amount of the transaction. It's necessary because, you know, to be a distributed ledger, but our names are not attached to those. But, you know, I mean, compared to the existing form of money we have, I honestly think it's better money and it's, and it's a great technology. I've spent 20 years doing security and distributed systems. That's my area of expertise as a professional. So what I love about this is that I can see the elegance of the technology and I understand its implications. The last time I felt like this was 1992. And it was because I saw the internet and I saw the elegance of it. And I was out telling as many people as I could, you know, this is really going to change things in ways you don't even expect. And I can't even explain to you yet because it's going to unfold in ways no one anticipates. Because what it does is it democratizes information. You know, saying that uh, Bitcoin is digital money is a bit like saying that the internet is a fancy telephone. Yes, it can operate as a fancy telephone, but that's missing the entire rest right. of the elephant in the room, right? The the Bitcoin is goes beyond just uh, digital money. It's far grander than that. Uh, if you actually look at the original white paper for Bitcoin, it says uh, Bitcoin is a 
distributing, distributed system for time-stamped contracts. Now, it just happens that the most common form of contract we use is transferring value from one person to another. But there's so much more that can emerge out of the Bitcoin system. Uh, a lot of a lot of these thing, a lot of this potential that's in the Bitcoin system simply isn't used that yet because it's still in its nascent stages where it's forming. It's like the early internet. The early internet did not have web browsers. It was very hard and very technical for people to use, but. People came along and they built the tools, they built the systems for people to interact with that. With Bitcoin, you can do really incredible things, things like, uh, you know, things like healthcare or hospitals or schools. You, people like that, and, but we have to find ways to keep funding that. The, the biggest part of human history, a lot of the most difficult problems, like communicating at distances or agreeing with lots of different people, simply didn't scale. And because you couldn't scale solutions to those problems, we built hierarchical institutions to solve them. Representative democracy, we built councils and committees to solve decision making, we built banks and central banks uh, in order to solve issuance of currency and other things like that. And we built hierarchical media organizations because we needed a single voice to tell us what to think. And then gradually we're seeing these solutions that are decentralized, that solve the problem without a hierarchical organization, and that scale. So the internet was the first decentralized communications that scales to the whole planet. And so suddenly all of the hierarchical solutions for communication are no longer necessary. They solve a problem that doesn't exist. The problem of it being difficult to transmit information across the continent or across the globe. Once that problem goes away, the institutions built to solve it, news systems, large entertainment and marketing organizations to you know, create single output products, all of those are no longer necessary and the choice blossoms. Bitcoin is simply the same concept of decentralization, but applied to money. Bitcoin will save capitalism. I thoroughly believe that. I think Bitcoin represents uh, free market ideals and capitalistic ideals uh, that allow you to re-inject innovation with risk, because risk is part of innovation, into um, an economy that has become stagnant as the attempts to de-risk everything have led to these giant monopolies, these cartels in banking, these cartels in retail, these cartels in information and media and entertainment and and uh, even in consumer electronics, you know, these giant organizations that are able through a combination of patents and copyright laws and cozy regulations and closed systems to completely rig every market until competition is swept out of the system. We are seeing the budding start, the embryonic start of a, a financial system in itself. And what does that mean? It means for the investor that it's very likely that in the future you'll be able to sell your bitcoins directly in return for the other asset class you're interested in. You will be able to buy commodities with bitcoin, buy futures with bitcoin, shares with bitcoin. Uh, and so this, this idea that we always need to go back to fiat first and then back to bitcoin, I think over time that will become less, less of a pressing problem. Bitcoin is not just money. Bitcoin right. is an invention. And what that invention allows people to do is move value across the internet. And that invention means you can do Bitcoin, but it also means you can do a lot of other things. And Bitcoin is an incredible invention because it, for the first time, it completely democratizes money. It separates money from a function of power of the state to an individual exchange between people, like it used to be when it was shells and feathers, right? Or, um, you know, barter exchange. So you can do some pretty incredible things because what you've done is you've decentralized decision making. The internet decentralized communications. Bitcoin is decentralizing money, but at its core is an invention that decentralizes decision making. Bitcoin is a little island of growth and jobs and opportunity and innovation uh, in a sea of stagnant economic uh, conditions across Europe and across the world and across the US.